Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Hopefully, today's video is not going to be uh, too long because in terms of breaking weather news, there's not much going on. Um, just, I wanted to give you an update on the the heat. It's fairly warm across much of the country and fuck you. And uh, right now it's June 26th and through at least July 10th, expect for most of the country to be rather warm and rather rather dry so um I, you know it, it depends for your area because if you get one thunderstorm that hits your area um you can you know your whole week cannot be dry maybe you know maybe turn into a wet week because of that one thunderstorm but most of the areas that don't see thunderstorms which is quite a few since these thunderstorms are scattered in nature will be rather seeing dry and hot conditions so uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos you know if you like these videos if you've been liking what I've been doing um, consider subscribing consider uh, liking the video uh, you know it really helps my channel a lot and it just motivates me and let's just first you know most importantly let me know say let me know it lets me know that you guys like these videos. So, uh, right now the GFS model model run is just coming in, but as I'm recording it, it's as I'm recording this. Sorry, I'm, I can't pronounce the words. I just I ate like ice cream and my mouth is literally frozen. So probably not the best time. But again, I was gonna say that it's five o'clock and I don't want to record a video later on because then it seems like they get less views later on in the evening, and that makes sense. People are just uh, more things to do in the evening than watch my weather videos, which obviously aren't the most important thing so right now we're looking at the GFS six hour precipitation rate it may look like if it's gonna be a very wet uh, a pattern but again these are just very scattered thunderstorms you can see the GFS is showing this whole area under rain well that's most likely probably just gonna be a few thunderstorms occurring along this cold front or whatever this may be this disturbance and overall a very warm pattern so let's go uh, actually let's stay on this GFS model, model run let's go to the 2 meter temperature shaded and since it goes out to hour 96 uh, let's just you know go out to hour 96 so right now today was not that bad I mean it was hot uh, many locations seeing the AC running but notice how the most central and northern part of the country was not too horrible 80s and 70s some 90s in the south uh, Florida excluding very hot in Florida um, but you could see that uh, tomorrow Thursday gets a little bit hotter especially around the central southern United States and the Midwest the upper Midwest not so much but then Friday comes along you can see very warm as well getting a little bit hotter across Nebraska Kansas and into Oklahoma and then Saturday comes even hotter across those areas, and the upper Midwest is equally hot now. Though Northwest may be a little bit cooler, Northeast as well a little bit chillier, but a lot of the country is under a dome of high pressure, which induces way more um, warm temperatures than uh, it's you know regularly when when they're usually around this time of the year. I mean, the average here is around 83, and we're seeing about 90s every day. So that's you know not awfully too. Uh, in terms of anomaly, not awfully too uh, extreme heat. It could be hundreds at this time of the year easily, and there was before, but it's definitely still uh, warm. So uh, we may be seeing heat advisories, heat waves getting prompted across some portions of the country because it's just that warm, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see because I usually don't issue that too far out before the actual event so um, you could see I mean the southeast getting again awfully warm you could see hundreds and 90s upper 90s low hundreds triple digit heat and this continues you could see July 3rd July 4th look at this still warm July 4th uh, we'll I'll, you know if you want to know your forecast for July 4th I'll try going over that right now uh, it's still 200 hours out, which is extremely far. So whether you'll see rain for your fireworks, that's really far-fetched. So let's go to MSLP and preset. I can tell if it's going to be you know, a rather conducive pattern or not. And at this point, it seems that a lot, a lot, around that time, we could be seeing uh, quite a good chunk of the U.S. under some stormy uh, conditions. So definitely, even if it does rain, 
it's not going to be all out. So even if it's raining a couple hours before the firework event, it might not be uh, actually raining during the firework event. Because, in a, again, this is not spring or winter where the, if it rains, you know, usually rains all day. doesn't get drastically all of a sudden sunny after a couple hours of rain. That only happens in the summer where, you know, we literally could see sunny conditions in the morning. An hour or two of cloudy conditions and then rain and then the rest of the day is also sunny uh, that you know that's it's very uh, dynamic but afterwards 7th 8th 9th of july you could see almost nothing i mean literally nothing no sign no sign of rain and even these small uh scattered that's might you know that's again over exaggerated because there's a gfs also noticed a potential tropical storm slash hurricane in the eastern pacific ocean this is around july 10th and this is where the models are showing a cool down so uh, will this happen I don't know but also notice how there is a big uh, a big uh, storm system taking place and that is usually associated with a big pattern change so we could be looking at chillier conditions definitely after I would say safely right now the first week of July uh, let's go into two meter temperature anomalies you can see some blue colors um they have backed down from where they recently were or at least on this model run but that's still you know far out so they're gonna go back and forth but if you look at the climate the cfs weekly and take you uh, through this one by one so this week very warm next week also fairly warm or the, the, you know the week i don't know if they're actually uh if it's uh it's running through okay so it just runs from the 6th through the 10th of July, you could see still fairly above average, but then um, <clears throat> you could see that from the 10th of July to the 17th, chillier, and then also the chill stays for the second half of July, basically, and then into August, it may start warming up again. Is this going to happen? I don't know, but the CFS has been very consistent with this, and it's not backing down, so also I want to mention that the CFS has a warm bias, so whenever it does show a little bit of cold, you know that that is usually uh you know not over exaggerated and typically under exaggerated frankly so we have to take this you know take note of this especially since this is a reality and i will definitely be making videos updating you guys on this if this does happen i remember i made a couple of videos yesterday or a video yesterday about the long range chillier conditions possible uh, yeah that's definitely still in the forecast this video is talking about the heat but Definitely don't think that this is, you know, the threat is over. The heat is happening right now, but uh, it definitely uh, will not, you know, last forever. You can see, <clears throat> even though there is the, it's very warm across the central part of the country in the Midwest, um, the anomalies, again, aren't too hot or aren't too great. You could see that a little bit across the southern Canada, but a little, I mean, if you were look, to look at this during the spring or fall, um, you would be looking at this and being like, you know, this isn't really too extreme on either side. Maybe the northwest is being a little bit cooler. But here it doesn't seem too awfully warm or too cold. But, you know, again, just a little bit warmer during the summer could really crank those uh, average hot temperatures of a summer to, like, extreme heat. Even a few degrees. And then uh, in terms of the chilly conditions, you know, that takes quite a bit to cool down the summer. Uh, even, you know, takes 10 to 15 degrees. If you had 10 to 15 degrees above average, that would be potentially a, uh, you know, a, a bad event because that would lead to a lot, lots of heat. But also notice how they, uh, there could be some waves of cooler air rushing in from Canada. There's one right there and it moves into the northeast. This is the newest model, model run and I, I will have to see what it shows in the long range later on. It's still not in. But again, I wanted to record this video before uh, 5 o'clock so that uh, more people are willing to watch this so yeah, as of now if i were to take it to the national weather service map um it's really fucking, it's really not uh impressive at all maybe they now have some severe no they don't um they're not even a single severe thunderstorm watch i mean look at that it's just basically as plain oh uh, yeah okay sorry never mind uh, i usually don't look for this area for severe thunderstorm watches but a little bit in oregon washington and montana in Wyoming, there are some uh, some severe thunderstorm watches, but otherwise, some red flag warnings, some warn, and then some severe thunderstorm warnings, and it's overall pretty calm. Uh, let's go to this area. You can see there are some flash flood warnings going on across Missouri, but overall, uh, nothing too crazy. 
and just the heat really nagging. I mean, look at this, 86, 87. This isn't even the hottest, you know, part. The hottest will be the southeast. So, uh, the video is going to end soon, guys. So, thank you so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And I will catch you all, guys, in the next episode. See ya. Bye.